All right, one more, and this one I am like, I don't get it, okay? The other ones I can kind of see, I can see how I would use this. This one I am fundamentally and absolutely opposed to, okay? It's not happening in my house. It's not happening, no. Today I want to talk about some of the interior trends that I'm seeing online and I have mixed feelings about. There's some that I absolutely love. There's some that I absolutely hate. And there's some that I have mixed feelings about and I'm like, we need to have a chat about this. So uh, if you love interior trends, you've come to the right place, make sure you hit subscribe and check out our interior trends entire playlist. Guys, we've got an entire playlist because we love talking about interior trends here at the House of Valentina. So I will leave all that link down below for you and make sure you give the video a thumbs up. If you're like me and you're like, I love watching the trends. What is it about them that just makes them so much fun? I think it's because it tells you something about what's going on with people, right? And what people want and what they're into and what's popular. And it's just fun to know. And of course it's informative if you're thinking about selling your home or investing your money into something and you want to know whether it's going to be a waste. So all those reasons are good reasons to know what is on trend. So let's jump into this video and see what we think about these latest interior trends. So cobalt blue is a color trend that people are saying is making a big comeback. And I, I kind of mix feelings about that statement because I kind of feel like cobalt blue has always been here. I think part of that is because my mom's favorite color is cobalt blue and she has always, always used it in her house, whether it was accents or in one of her previous homes, we had a two story family room painted out in cobalt blue and we all loved that room. It was so beautiful. So for me, that's a color that I feel like it's not really trending. It just is always there, just the same as black and white and red. But I do think that it is fun when it becomes a little bit more popular because you can find more accessories. It becomes a little bit more accessible. So with cobalt blue, if you love this color, don't be afraid to jump on it. It's one that I tend to not use as much in my own home, but I really enjoy going over to my mom's house and my parents' house. They are still married. I, we all just call it mom's house because she decorates it. And dad's like, don't talk about decorating with me, right? <laughs> That's how some parents are, right? I don't know why we do that, but they've been married for almost 50 years. <laughs> so um, anyways, I think that the cobalt blue is such a beautiful color and I personally don't use it a lot in my own home, but I do think it's a really beautiful color. And if you love blue, I feel like that cobalt blue, it's so bold and it's so exciting and it's so dramatic. And there's a lot of different ways that you can use this trend. So you could use it on the walls. Like I said, my mom has had that on her wall. My parents, I keep saying that. <laughs> My parents have had that color on the wall and it's just beautiful and I love living in it because it's so dramatic and I really love the drama of it. You could also do this color in accessories. You could do it with pillows, uh, candles, vases, right? There's lots of different ways to use that. I think when it starts to feel like it's kind of trending out just a little bit is maybe when it's used like in lighting because colored lighting isn't something that's really in necessarily. But like I always say about these trends, you have to kind of process through them and figure out which one of these are something that really matter to you and just always create a home around yourself that you really love. And then if you're selling your home and you're getting ready to put it on the market, then maybe you might want to neutralize it a little bit and remove something that might be trendy, but otherwise you just do you. Okay. Cause this is your home and you need to be iconic and you need to do you. And that's how you're going to do that. Another trend that is going nowhere is self care. So one of the trends that you're going to be seeing a lot more of are rooms in your home that are focused on self care. So that could be a spa in the basement. It could be a sauna. It could be a manicure station. It could also be just focusing in your bathroom on spaces and storage that help you to have those just enough place to be able to put all of your, your beauty items and your self care items. So 
Self-care is going to stay popular. I am all for it. I say this all the time and I really do believe that self-care is really important. I think it's so important to wake up and feel your best. So you guys have heard me talk about Blooming before. It's because it's a product. Their Face Pro is just amazing. They are a video sponsor for today. And I gotta tell you, this is in, this is in my beauty stash. This is in my self-care routine because I just love it. Their Face Pro is just so amazing. I take this with me even when I travel. I'm gonna turn it right on. This uses light and microcurrent to not only, of course, just make your face feel amazing. I'm gonna start using it while we chat about it, okay? <sighs> so happy when I use this. I use this three times a week and it helps immediately reduce the puffiness out of your face. I really love this because it instantaneously depuffs your face. It also tightens your skin. It's amazing for your jawline, especially. I feel like it's really helped tighten my jawline. I usually use it in the mornings. Sometimes I do use it at night, but usually in the mornings before I'm gonna put my makeup on and it really helps the skincare penetrate into your skin. And it really does, I think it's really helped reduce the wrinkles and uh, help tighten up my skin. And so I absolutely love it. It feels like a warm hug on your face. So you can even see how I've already depuffed just from using this for just a minute while we're chit chatting. So it is just so good. I know you're gonna love it and I know a lot of you are loving it already because the last time we talked about it, you guys completely sold it out. So I asked Blooming, <laughs> now that it's back in stock, I asked if I could give you guys another discount code. So if you click my link down below, it's gonna get you $70 off and you'll also get a free uh, face tightening ebook with that as well. Why not get that discount for the first 100 people? Oh, the best part, by the way, is that if you don't get results, you don't have to pay. Check out the link down below, be one of the first 100 and get that $70 off in that free ebook. I think you're gonna love it. Thank you again to Blooming for being our video sponsor. Speaking of iconic, let's talk about this next one. I kind of feel like we, I really need to look into this a little bit more and that is Mob Wife Aesthetic. And I had to go look that up because I was like, what, is this really a thing? <laughs> Apparently it's really big on TikTok. I looked it up on Pinterest as well. I see a lot for the mob wife aesthetic with clothing, a little bit less so much with interiors. However, The Sopranos has made a big comeback. They've had their 25th anniversary and everybody's talking about the interiors at the moment of uh, this mob wife aesthetic because of that, I guess. And I find the, the, just the name was such a turnoff that I, I immediately thought, I do not want to like this, this is awful. Why would you want that? Like, that sounds terrible. And then I looked at the aesthetic and it's all like fur coats and you know, like statement sunglasses and you know, women with their hair curled and high heels and I thought, oh my God. <laughs> I think I've got a little bit of this aesthetic in me. <laughs> So if you are thinking about this aesthetic, you could look at sets from, say, uh, The Sopranos. But I think that style is actually a little bit more developed from there. I would say, think about really rich, decadent furniture. Think about fur blankets and gold accessories. Think about crystal and just bling. And you just, it really needs to be ostentatious. It really needs to be quite maximalist. And we're really not talking about clean lines or delicate silhouettes. No, we are talking about like more is more and you really just wanna show off how much money you have. <laughs> so think about brands like Versace and um, what else? Um, yeah, I was immediately thinking of like Versace because it's just like kind of in your face. It's a little bit, it's pretty bold. And I think that you could really go for some traditional pieces of furniture and mixing that with heavy drapes. And yeah, so when the, as far as the aesthetic side of the home, 
I don't think I'm as much that style, but I do think you could take some pieces of it and have a little bit of fun with it. Like the nice big oversized fur blankets and some of the accessories, I could definitely go for that. But let me know what you guys think about that. And if you've heard anything about that, because I haven't seen anybody doing it, but when I looked it up, it was like, I feel like we need to chat and do a little bit more research and find out more about this one because it could be interesting. We were just talking about being a little bit ostentatious and then Armani just came out in Milan with gold furniture and I'm like, okay, this is what I'm talking about. We are moving into a new era in interiors. And for those of us who have said we love quiet luxury, we love minimal design, apparently we are going out. I don't know what to tell you. Here's my thing none of these styles ever really go out, right? They just become a little bit more popular or they become a little less popular. Will these styles become so mainstream that we see them in all of the, all the stores, right? Like even places like Haverty's and Rooms to Go, right? Like does it become that level of a trend? Will gold furniture be sold everywhere? I don't think so. I think that's where you have to really kind of look at these trends and say, it's trending, but it's not the thing that everybody wants. It's not hitting the mass market, right? So the way that we saw Modern Farmhouse hit mass market where people just couldn't get enough of it, will the gold furniture be that? Probably not. I don't think so. I don't think so. However, if you like this mob <laughs> mob wife aesthetic and you are really into maximalism i think looking at some gold furniture could be a lot of fun it might be a trend that you might want to include in your own home i would say that it's more important that you form your own style and your own aesthetic than to follow trends no matter what they are right you always want to come back to your personality and what makes you tick and what really makes your home feel like you so with the gold furniture you could add a you could add a dining table you could add uh, something simple like maybe just a nice uh you know like bookshelf or it could be a side table or a mirror like you can add gold furniture in in a lot of different ways where it doesn't have to feel ostentatious or too much but as far as like gold furniture being like the biggest trend out there, I don't think it's gonna be like that popular. You guys let me know what you think down in the comments, okay? I always love hearing your comments. I always read them and I love hearing what you have to say and whether you see these trending in your area. Some of these, sometimes it also might depend on whether you live in the city or the suburbs or if you're in a rural setting. Would these ever get to you? Maybe not, <laughs> but maybe they will. And that's where the real fun is in these. Curvy everything is going nowhere. And I am so glad because I said that last year, because like I said, we do a lot of these trend videos. If you haven't watched the trend video playlist, you really should, because you'll get to see that a lot of the trends that we like to talk about, we talk about trends that, you know, the flash of the pan trends, those are the ones we're trying to avoid here. And then we talk about ones that have like that everlasting quality to them. So curvy is something we've been saying is really here to stay. And I think it's really interesting because we just weren't sure whether it was really going to catch on was it quite trendy about three four years ago it was really starting to get popular and it's just not going anywhere it really isn't there's something about it that just i think it's going to be a long lasting trend that we're going to really love for a long time so when it comes to curvy what does that mean it just means soft edges a little bend in that sofa maybe also involving your coffee table you can go for something that's round or even just an abstract shape there's a lot of different options you could think about a curvy head Headboard. I have one that's it's not super curvy, but it's got a little curve in it, a little headboard. I love it. I just love it. So yeah, I think curvy is here to stay and I'm all for it. And let me know what you guys think, but I do love a straight line. And personally, I like to balance them out quite a bit in my own home. I mean, even here, um, you can kind of see the, the curvy the curvy dining chairs, right, in this room. I, I like it, but personally, I like balancing it with quite a bit of structure. So you can decide how much curvy you want. Do you wanna balance it with quite a bit of structure or where's your mix? 
it's all up to you. Victorian is making a huge comeback and I actually really love this style and I always really have. Uh, if you think about like Parisian apartments, if you think about uh, the Gilded Age, if you guys have watched that show, I love that show. Love watching the interiors, right? Something that's a little bit gilded where there's just a lot of ugh, the crown molding, the crown molding. Oh, I just love it. So as a person who has a little bit of traditional crown molding in my own home and um, like my fireplace and stuff, I did not remove that when I moved into my house partly because I didn't have any money to take any of that stuff out and it would have been really expensive to take it all out, but also because I just really liked it and still to this day, I still really do. And I think that's where when you see these trends kind of come and go, sometimes you just wait it out because you're just not that worried whether you're just like the cool kid at the moment because you know, it's like, that's not really important. If you like Victorian style, you may find yourself loving like heavy drapery, you might like florals, you might like jewel tones and rich mahogany furniture. You don't have to do all of those things though if you like that Victorian style. You could do something like I've done where I have the a little bit heavier detail in the crown molding. I miss that so much from being in Europe where so many of the apartments and homes that I got to photograph and style up were very Victorian in style and they had that Housemanian style of Paris and I loved it. The more ornate, the better. So here in the US, we tend to not have as much of that, just depending on where you live, but I still think it's really beautiful and I am all for that coming back. So let me know what you guys think about the Victorian style. Loud Luxury is another style that we've been talking about quite a bit. We did an entire video on it, so if you wanna see more about it, uh, definitely check out that separate video. Loud Luxury, we've been talking about it a lot, that it's not just about logo mania, and especially when it comes to interiors, but it's this idea of just more, just more and more, maybe bringing back that Hermes blanket, maybe having a little, you know, a little Dior <laughs> moment, you know, maybe there's some candles or tray, like actually bringing in some designer items. Like you really can actually bring back a little bit of that. You really can bring back the designer feeling in the home and it could be a little bit more in your face in that way. But it's also about just actually being bolder in your choices. And that's what we talked about a lot in the other video. And we really dissected this idea of loud luxury and how it plays itself out in interiors. So for me, I am a fan of loud luxury. I wouldn't say that I'm off the charts with this one. I would say that I'm somewhere in the middle on it. I have a little bit, right? Like bold art, oh goodness. Uh, you know, I've got florals and I've got the table set and I've, I've got quite a bit going on in my home and there's a feeling of luxury and it really isn't always very quiet. And I think that's where this style has gotten to be more and more popular. And I think we're only at the beginning of the return of more. I think a lot more people are just craving just something extra. It's like having a blazer with some buttons on it. Like I found myself buying all things that were simple and no logos, no, you know, even like a graphic or anything, right? Like everything's really simple and, and you can see, I mean, that really is how I kind of dress anyways. I would say I'm somewhere in the middle, right? Cause quiet luxury may not have, you know, some buttons on it. It's not as ornament, there's not as much ornamentation. Whereas with loud luxury, it's not just the logo, right? It's just adding on layers of items that just have a little bit more in your face luxury feeling. So uh, in the home, that would mean going for brass sconces. It would be going for crystal chandeliers. It could be painting the room out in a bold color, cobalt blue, uh, dark gray, you know, almost black. Like there's just this boldness and it has a little bit more of just this iconic feeling. And that's why I think that mom wife aesthetic chat about that some more. I might have to just do a whole video about it so we can really dive into that because I feel like mob wipe aesthetic is one where you kind of get this loud luxury, gold furniture, all these things are starting to happen and you're like, what is happening here in interiors? Is this here to stay? I kind of hope it is. I kind of hope it is. Oregano.
All right, one more, and this one I am like, I don't get it, okay? The other ones I can kind of see, I can see how I would use this. This one I am fundamentally and absolutely opposed to, okay? It's not happening in my house, it's not happening, no. It's just never happening, and that is ugly media rooms. I, I genuinely do not understand why you would ever want to make a room of your home purposely ugly. Just literally layering on fabrics that just oppose each other, that sit with dissonance between them. I just don't get it. I don't I don't get trying to make it feel old I, or like purposely out of style, like taking things that have like a really dated feel and filling your house with it. Like I could never purposely set out to make a room ugly. <laughs> and that's literally what this aesthetic is all about. It's like taking the pretty out and I'm like, am I just misunderstanding? Cause <sighs> no, just no. I've dreamt of being able to put in a media room into our home and when I think about my ideal media room, I actually think that what's going out for sure are like the media, like the cinema rooms. Those aren't as popular anymore. People are instead doing, going back, shifting back to a media room where it's like, my dream was to have like a cloud sofa and have like a big TV, you know, and like a dark room and some really nice, uh, shelving with like books and like a really beautiful room to watch TV in. Whereas like the theater rooms, they've been trending out just a little bit. People haven't been as into them. No one ever complains about having one. It's just that me, like not as many people have been putting them in, if that makes any sense. People have been erring on the side now of just going for just a really beautiful room that they want to watch TV in. So this um, ugly media room thing, I'm a little confused by. I just don't get it. Why would you want, why would you want your media room to be ugly? I guess if you turn the lights off, I don't know. It's just not me. It's just not something I'm gonna get onto. I would never invest my money into it. I wouldn't want to invest even my energy into creating something like that. So I guess to other people, it has to be beautiful, like in an ugly way. <laughs> It's like one of those really ugly dogs. <laughs> You're like, it's so ugly, it's cute. I think that's where we're at all this. I think that's what the mentality is and that's the only way I can even understand it. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you think about each of these trends. If you think they are amazing and you're happy that they are staying or if you feel like they just need to go before they really even come. Let me know what you guys think. I'll leave a link down below for the trends playlist if you want to check out some of the other trend videos that we've been doing lately and the ones that are specific about different styles. So maybe that'll help you if you're still in a place where you're still trying to figure out what your own personal style is, your reaction, I actually really recommend that you write down your reaction to these trends because it'll really help you clue in to what you really like. You don't have to do what the most popular thing is, but you're also allowed to do the most popular thing. There's no rules here about style. It's about discovering your own and creating a home for yourself and for your loved ones around that. So I hope you'll find that super helpful. I'll leave all the links down below. Thank you so much for joining me. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Until then, bye.